Um, hi everyone, my name is Dr. Puri Bhatt. I'm a naturopathic doctor and nutritionist. And today I'm going to be talking with analytical minds about a topic that a lot of people have been asking me about. And um, I hope this is useful to you. So today's topic is how to build a freelance practice in nutrition. And um, to give you a little background, I've been working as a freelance nutritionist for I think about a year and a half. And um, I have my own business, my own private practice. And so um, Analytical Minds reached out to me, hoping that I could give you some insight about what works and how to build your own practice using a little bit of my insight. And I hope this helps. Um, by the way, if you see me looking down again and again, it's because I'm looking at my laptop for a list of topics that I was asked to cover. So just ignore that. <laughs> so let's get into it. Um, the first the first thing that I wanted to talk about was that um, my personal experience with building a freelance practice was this and I'm hoping that it helps you build yours or you know give you some insight about how to go about it. Um, when I started my freelance practice, I actually had a full-time job. I was working as a nutritionist for a bigger company and they were giving me clients. So basically i started going on social media and i started um you know showcasing my skills talking about what i was passionate about the kind of nutrition work that i was interested in doing and over the course of time i started to get inquiries about um people wanting to work with me so clients would reach out and say you know um i'd like to consult you how do i do that and i slowly started to take clients privately you know outside of the capacity of my company and i started working with them and over time, this number started kind of increasing for me so much so that by the time I started my master's degree, um, I had quite an established client base and I was getting referrals from my clients to other clients. And that in turn helped me kind of set up my practice full um, in a full blown manner. Um, so much so that, you know, by the time I graduated from my master's, I was completely kind of, um, how to say, sorted in terms of my private practice. That part of my life was kind of taken care of. And um, my bindi is not in the center, it's driving mad. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's back, okay. So um, a little bit about what I think you need in order to build a freelance practice. Um, point number one, you need experience. You need to know what you're talking about. Um, I would strongly suggest working under someone till you're confident enough to actually give out nutritional advice. You have some experience in the field and um, you know, you don't want to be experimenting on clients to be honest because uh, when you're with a company, you have a lot of help, you have a lot of support, you have a lot of mentors. But when you start doing your own thing, it's on you to do the right thing. And if you don't know what the right thing is, or you don't know what the limit of your practice is, it could actually harm harm someone in the process. So I think experience is an absolute prerequisite when it comes to healthcare. You need to have adequate experience so that you actually are able to give people results in a safe, effective and evidence-based manner. Um, that's point number one. My second suggestion would be to start with a main job. I mean, you need to have a nine to five to pay your bills. I would not suggest starting a freelance practice on your own just because um, I think income would be a little more difficult. A great time to start a freelance practice is one, if you're already qualified and you're going in for further education like I did, or would be when you have a full-time job and you know, you kind of just start doing this on the side till you're confident enough to kind of um, let go of your main job and make this your main job. You know, you have enough clients, you have enough experience and you have enough um, confidence to actually give out good nutritional advice. That would be a good time to go fully freelance in my experience. Um, the third thing is, it's really important to maintain a good client base. Um, I think clients come if you're good at your job. Okay, people might want to try out your services for a month or two out of curiosity but if you don't deliver good results you're not actually good at your job it's going to be very difficult for you to actually retain your clients and that's when you're going to have to get into you know doing free promotions discounts basically compromising the integrity of your practice to get more clients is what you're going to have to do if you are not actually good at your job so my main advice would be to focus on what you're good at use that to your advantage and make sure the core of your private practice is within your skill set and you're not trying to do something that is not your qualification 
For example, um, if you're very comfortable handling clients with gastritis or with um, IBS, for example, I would not suggest taking on clients with a completely different disorder, maybe a neurological dis disorder like epilepsy or something like that, if that's not within your confidence because you want to actually give results to people and for that you kind of need to do it over time you know you can't just switch fields so much it doesn't help so much to you know um, get experience in my in my personal opinion um i think with a client base it's very very important to actually be um client friendly you need to be a good listener you need to be empathetic you need to understand that these are real people with real health problems and they're reaching out to you because they've tried everything else and you know they're kind of at an end point I think it's very easy for us as nutritionists to get judgmental or get like, oh, why can't they just eat like super healthy all the time or something like that. But you have to think in the perspective of a patient who's tried out a lot of things. They're probably very frustrated. They don't know what to do. And they're kind of looking to you to give them that guidance. So it's very, very important that you're an empathic listener. Um, you actually listen to what they're saying. You're not pretending to listen. So if they say something is not working for them, instead of saying, oh, make it work for you, you need to find out why and see if there's something you can do to make it easier for them. Okay, so I think empathy is a must if you want to have a good, um, good client base, whether you're a private practice or whether you're working for someone. If you're not empathic, I don't think this is a line of work that's going to be very successful for you. Um, another thing that's super important is follow up. You have to be in touch with your clients. You have to keep talking to your clients. You have to keep motivating them. You have to keep reassuring them. You have to keep guiding them. You have to handhold them through this journey because it's very easy to give a diet plan and you know, take your money and leave. But to actually give people results, you need to do a little bit of that health coaching aspect. And if you're not confident, I would suggest that you know you go ahead and get some certification, get some qualification, get some experience in this front because it actually makes a difference. Okay. And um, consistency. If you want to build up a practice, you have to be consistent. You have to show up every day. You have to put in that effort. Um, my 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 entire private practice grew very organically. I didn't invest any money into it, and um, I gave it a long shot in the sense that it took me nearly, I think, six months of going um, private practice for it to actually start sustaining me enough to pay all my bills abroad and everything. So, I think you have to give it the time that it takes, but. Um, if you're not consistent and you give up in the first month or two, I think then this is not, not the line of work for you. You need to keep trying new things and see what works for you, what fits your style of practice and what fits your clients ultimately. Find a middle ground and there's a great career waiting for you there. And um, this is what I know about how to build a freelance practice in nutrition. I really hope this helps someone because when I started freelance practice, no one gave me this advice. So I really hope that this helps someone out there who's trying to start freelancing. And I just want to say that this it's its a great opportunity which is totally underutilized. So go for it, take the plunge and you're going to do great. <laughs> Bye.